Uh, so what I'm going to talk about today is the Microsoft M unit testing uh, and mocking. So um, I talked to uh, Ron briefly about uh, the um, uh, test strategy. I think um, most of the testers uh, they they already know about this, the uh, test pyramid by Martin Fowler. So basically, you have the um, UI test, which is the the manual testing. Uh, for as the at the top of the pyramid and service testing and unit testing as, as the bottom so you see um, the if we out, you, most of the automation happens in unit and service testing but f for the case of integration we could also automate the UI testing so which is good uh, in the case of uh, integration uh, we don't do UI testing we call it end-to-end -end testing so for end-to-end -end testing you actually have tools like uh, Newman and Postman, which um, uh, Alan taught me how to use it, which is really good, and they are free. And then you have the SOAP UI, and also you have Curl. So what what you do this? What 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 happens in end-to-end uh, -end testing is you test live endpoints with uh, with all these uh, tools, meaning that um, uh, because in an integration system you have uh, intermediary uh, outbound endpoints, so so. Uh, when you test end to end, it means that all the intermediary outbound endpoints are live, and you you test end to end uh, based on whatever test scenarios or uh, permutations of um, input parameters or payloads that you can construct. So that's end to end. And then the the thing for M unit testing is um, Mule comes with M unit testing. You could use M unit testing to do end to end testing as well. If you do not mock the the uh, the outbound endpoints, but if you mock the outbound endpoints, you actually what you're essentially doing is you're doing service testing, whereby you silo the uh, the mill application away from all the external uh, outbound endpoints, and you just test your build with all the mock data, and then uh, you could also use M unit testing to do unit testing, because most of the mill component are actually uh, built by mill. We do not need to do unit testing unless we build our own uh, uh, mule components. So, some of the instances that we, we have done in uh, the projects that we have um, um, is the uh, what you call the groovy components. They, they, because we have script them, uh, we have custom script them, so we, we need to unit test them. But but you could also essentially use MUnit to test those groovy components if you want. So, and uh, Unit testing for for custom components or custom Java classes are using JUnit. So this is this is what we could possibly use to uh, automate the whole testing. So that, like like I mentioned, uh, testing uh, end to end testing is test testing the integration with live endpoints, and then uh, unit testing is testing custom endpoints, and service testing is isolate all the endpoints and just testing the the uh, unit of build that we have done for for that integration project. So I have created a sample uh, demo application to show you how uh, M unit testing works. Basically, how this um, you can uh, download the source code from uh, GitHub, and also there's an article about this sample application here, which is in the source. So in uh, the sample application actually accepts a HTTP request where it um, it will each time you trigger a request it will you will get uh, data from an employee table and um, each time you trigger the request this log call log table what it does is, is create a, it creates an entry of a request uh, with a given timestamp so to test this f simple flow what I've done is uh, in in the M unit testing there are three things that you need to be aware of one is the set message the set message, what essentially it does is um, it sets the um, uh, input parameters or any permutation of the input parameter. In this case, we are we are trying to uh, invoke a, a HTTP uh, inbound endpoint. So the set message will will, con will consist of all the uh, uh, you could set all the inbound parameters for a HTTP endpoint or the payloads and stuff like that. When when it, when it comes to file, you can you can use set message. To set the the um, input parameters for the file payload, and also you could also use it for uh, any other transport. So that's what set message is. When you when you put a set message, what essentially happens is um, 
it goes the uh, test goes directly into here the first uh, message processor and 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 so on and so forth until it comes back out so the the second component is the mock here because get employee uh, you could essentially mock to two things so that it doesn't uh, hit an external outpoint endpoint but in this test uh, what I've essentially mocked is the lock to call the the lock to call lock table and uh, the fin the final one is assert payload uh, asserting a payload that is being returned by uh, get employees message processor in uh, in this in this um in this testing, right, what I've used is the um, Derby uh, in-memory database. The reason why I've used it is because I also want to do some research on how to to assess its um, usability for us uh, when we when we want to um, um, process message messages faster. I'm, I'm not sure if we if I get more um, information about this in-memory database, maybe we could use it for other implementations. So, um, like I said, the um, the first uh, set message uh, component, what you will see in the uh, messages is that you could set the payload for the inbound and also the uh, properties. So, in, in the property section, uh, you could set an inbound property, you could set a flow variable, you could set a session variable, uh, everything you could do in, in this set message property. And then for the mock, you could... Um, Essentially, when you when you when you use mocking, what you are essentially doing is you are mocking a uh, message processor. In the so here, I'm mocking the message processor called lock to call lock table, which is this one. So so knowing knowing how mocking works, it's it, it then it then comes back down to how we. Uh, name our message processor we must have a naming convention for our message processors that we put in otherwise the if if let's say the the, the other drawback of using mock is if i change this lock to call lock table to something else the mock wouldn't work because it can't find the the message processor called lock to call lock so this is something that can trip you up you need to be aware of when you are using mocks and then the assert payload is um so uh, this test will return a payload and you could actually script the payload as a string or you could put that um, payload into a file and then read that file in the expected value and, and then and the assert will, will help you determine if the, the payload that is returned by the, the uh, mill build is the same. So this gives you a certain flexibility of not having to um, uh, uh, pack the payload into just one text box. So um, to run the demo application, I'll just go with um, the slide. And then uh, after the slide, I'll just show you how the application works in the real time. So like I said, the, um, the database that I'm using is the Derby database. So uh, when this is, this is how the uh, call log table looks like. Uh, it only contains three records before any test execution. So if you use um, Postman to uh, query to send in a GET uh, request, it will give you the a payload consisting of employee data from the employee table. And after the GET request is executed, you will see in the call log table that one entry is created uh, with a unique ID and, and a timestamp. And also in the um, mu uh, log console log, you see three lines of entry: the um, execution timestamp, and then the uh, payload after the log to string table, and then the actual response payload. So if you run mUnit test, you will get the same three lines in your console. But what's different is um, you won't see you won't see an additional record. Previously, there's uh, four records. One because third record, the the fourth record was created when we use Postman. But what what uh, what you will see in the M unit test is the the good thing about M unit is you can see the coverage report. So the hundred percent coverage meaning that that your test has covered all the components, the message processes 
in the M unit testing. So having this coverage report is really handy because it tells you um, uh, when you build a M unit test, how much of the um, how much of the test has covered in your system. What the coverage report doesn't show is it just tells you uh, in the test execution at what path or what node it has covered. In this case, we have covered 100% of the node because it's a relatively simple application, but it doesn't tell you uh, all the whether you have covered all the possible and probable functional permutation. So, but but in in any way, this is better than than nothing showing um, the percentage of coverage. The other good thing about um, the coverage report is besides having a fancy uh, HTML page where you could um, show. Uh, uh, anyone or managers or whomever you could also get a, a JSON payload and uh, you could actually integrate this JSON payload to the TFS and and then TFS could display those um, charts and that, uh, that would also help us uh, to gauge in the TFS if if that uh, particular build is is um, ready based on the coverage and all this so this is another thing that we could use to to um, as a CI to CI CD to integrate to the uh, TFS to show show. Um, so I'll just show you how it works. <laughs> 